classify our portfolio into, into two categories, essentially. One are the incubated companies, which are co-located with us, um, that we have a lot more involvement with. And then there are the more passive you know, growth or feeder companies. These would be startups that we put a little bit of money in to see, essentially reserve a spot for investing in the future. Um, so I would say in terms of how much heart do we put into these things, it, it, it clearly goes into the incubated companies. We want success for all of our investments, but in terms of where we put the most dollars, the most time, it's by definition the ones that, are, that we're incubating. Um, so passing the bar to be, be an incubated company means you go past a lot of hurdles. But if it makes past that hurdle, then obviously that means we're going to continue to invest in it. Um, and we'll put more and more time into it. So what it boils down to Jim and I and, and the rest of the Canrock team is figuring out and making sure that we are allocating our time effectively across these portfolio companies and that the ones that we're making sure we're putting enough time and the ones that we're putting a lot of dollars in and the ones that are the neediest. Um, there's a life cycle that each one of these companies goes through in terms of how needy they are. So Karma 411 is a great example. So Karma, I, I love that company and, and John Murcutt doing a terrific job of growing it. Um, but that would be a good example of a company that in the first couple of years, it took a lot of my time, you know, even to the point of actually programming in the early days. But now it's at the point where John has got that thing running, he's in growth mode, you know, hiring salespeople, you know, expanding the existing teams. And we interact really as chairman to CEO level, where we prep for board meetings, we, you know, I talk to him every day, but the amount of involvement he needs is much less than when it was in the early stages. So there's a curve, there's a maturity curve, so the time demands, you know, if this is over time, you know, in the early days it needs a lot, and then it tapers off if it's successful. And if it's not, then it's pretty much a candidate for this might not have been a very good idea. So there's that over the course of a year, two, three, four years, you know, we're looking for the point where it, the, the time demands are, are smaller, so then we can plow into the to the other companies that are needier, the little babies. We look at these things as each, each company as uh, like a baby, right? So you got to nurture the baby, you got to feed it. You know, they can't do much for itself in the very early days, but then after a point, it's a toddler, it's a teenager, and, and ultimately they you either kick them out of the house or they or they graduate on to, to college. So, um, you know, we have that same sense of what that's our purpose as a fund.